Hello fellow seekers of the unknown and welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving deep into a mystery that's as fresh as yesterday's headlines and as enduring as the enigma of the men in black. Just recently a family in Las Vegas reported a strange incident that has left the city and indeed the whole world buzzing with speculation. They claim to have seen something crash in their backyard and that's not all. They also reported seeing non-human beings describing them as very large like eight feet nine feet ten feet they look like aliens to us big eyes they have big eyes like i can't explain it and, and big mouth they're shiny eyes and they're human they're 100 not human now i don't know about you but that sounds like a scene straight out of a sci-fi movie the police were called investigations were made and the incident even caught the attention of the pentagon but this isn't the first time such strange occurrences have been reported. In fact, it ties into a long-setting mystery that we're going to unravel today. The mystery of the man in black. Yes, you heard that right. Not the Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones kind, but the real life. Shadowy figures that have been linked to cryptid sightings and UFO encounters. These men in black have been reported at numerous UFO sightings throughout history, adding an extra layer of intrigue to these already puzzling events. Now, I know what you're thinking. Great, another alien conspiracy video. But stick around, because this one rabbit hole you won't want to miss. Let's turn back the clock and delve into the origins of the Men in Black. The first recorded encounter dates back to 1947, when Harold Dahl and his son reported a chilling encounter. They claimed to have been warned not to talk about their alleged UFO sighting in Maury Island by a man in a dark suit. Dahl described the man as dressed entirely in black and advised me not to talk. Now, if that doesn't send shivers down your spine, I don't know what will. Fast forward to 1953, and we meet a key player in our story, Albert K. Bender. Bender was a dedicated UFO researcher who claimed to have been visited by men in dark suits who threatened him into silence. He described them as clad in black clothes. They looked like clergymen, but wore hats similar to homework style. Bender was convinced that these men in black were secret government agents tasked with suppressing evidence of UFOs. But the sightings didn't stop there. Over the years, numerous encounters have been reported, each more eerie than the last. In 1961, Barney and Betty Hill, who claimed to have been abducted by aliens, reported visits from men in black who attempted to intimidate them into silence. In 1967, Robert Richardson of Toledo, Ohio, reported that he collided with a UFO while driving at night. After the incident, he was visited by two men in black who confiscated a piece of metal he believed was from the UFO and warned him not to speak of the incident. And then there's the case of Dr. Herbert Hopkins in 1976, who was studying a UFO incident when he received a visit from a man who identified himself as a representative of a New Jersey UFO organization. The man exhibited such a strange behavior that Hopkins concluded he was an alien in disguise. The man in black told Hopkins to stop studying UFOs and then vanished without a trace. Now, you might be wondering, what ties all these stories together? Well, that's where Gray Barker comes in. Barker was a prominent ufologist who played a significant role in shaping the narrative around the men in black, but more on him in a bit. For now, let's just say that his involvement adds another layer of intrigue to this already captivating mystery. Now, let's shift our focus to a man who was instrumental in shaping the narrative around the men in black, Gray Barker. Born in 1925, in rural West Virginia, Barker developed an early interest in the paranormal, which would later shape his career. He was a writer, a publisher, a ufologist, and some might argue, a master of deception. Barker's most notable work is They Knew Too Much About Flying Saucer, a book that introduced the Men in Black to a wider audience. In this book, Barker weaves a captivating narrative around the Men in Black, painting them as ominous figures tasked with suppressing evidence of extraterrestrial life. He describes them as Three men in black suits with threatening expressions on their faces. They were not government agents. There was something else, something much worse. But Barker didn't stop there. He continued to publish books on UFOs and paranormal phenomenon, each more sensational than the last. His works, such as The Silver Bridge and the MIB, The Secret Terror Among Us, further perpetuated the myth of the men in black, cementing their place in the UFO folklore. However, as we delve deeper into Barker's life and work, we begin to see hints that not everything is as it seems. Barker was known for his playful approach to ufology. He often blurred the lines between fact and fiction, leading some to question the veracity of his claims. His close associate James Mosley once said, Barker pretty much took all of ufology as a kind of grand joke. 
Could it be that the men in black, these figures that have captured our collective imagination, are nothing more than a figment of Barker's creative mind? Could these tales of mysterious men in dark suits been an elaborate hoax, a product of Barker's penchant for storytelling? As we continue to unravel this mystery, we might just find that the truth is stranger than fiction. Let's now turn our attention to the unraveling of the Man in Black narrative. As we've seen, the Man in Black have been a staple of UFO lore for decades, their presence intertwined with numerous sightings and encounters. But what if I told you that the very foundation of this narrative is built on a fabrication? The first crack on the Man in Black facade comes from none other than Gray Barker himself. In a letter to a friend, Barker confessed that his writing on the Man in Black were largely sensationalized. He wrote, I do enjoy listening to people's stories about their unusual experiences, and I must admit that I enjoy pulling their legs with some of my own stories. Barker's confession doesn't stand alone. John Sherwood, a friend and collaborator of Barker's, revealed in 1980s that he had helped Barker fabricate the story of Dr. Hopkins' encounter with a man in black. Sherwood stated, Gray asked me to write a story about a weird man dressed in black. He said he was said as a true story and I agreed. It, it was a prank, a, a joke. Further evidence of the Men in Black hoax comes from Barker's close associates, James Mosley. Mosley, who was known for his skeptical approach to ufology, once stated, Barker and I would often sit around and laugh about the things we were writing. We knew we were pulling the legs of the public, but it was such a fun. These confessions, coupled with the lack of concrete evidence supporting the existence of the Men in Black, paint a clear picture. The Men in Black, as they are commonly portrayed, are likely the product of creative minds and sensational storytelling. But even as we debunk the Men in Black narrative, we must remember that the truth, as they say, is often stranger than fiction. The Men in Black may not be real in the way they've been portrayed, but their story reflects our collective fascination with the unknown and the lengths we'll go to make sense of it. Let's take a step back and look at the journey we've embarked on today. We started with a recent incident in Las Vegas, where a family reported an alien encounter, and we traced the narrative back to the enigmatic Man in Black, figures shrouded in mysteries and intrigue. We dove into the origins of the Men in Black, their deceptions, and the encounters that have been reported over the years. We then turned our attention to Gray Barker, the man who played a pivotal role in shaping the Men in Black narrative. But as we delve deeper, we found that the men in black, as they've been portrayed, are likely the product of creative storytelling and sensationalism. Barker himself admitted to fabricating parts of the narrative, and his associates corroborated these claims. The men in black, it seems, are more myth than reality. Yet, even as a myth, the men in black have left an indelible mark in our culture. They've inspired movies like the popular Men in Black series, and TV shows such as The X-Files. They've become a symbol of the unknown, the unexplained, and the mysterious. They represent our collective fascination with what lies beyond our understanding. As we reflect on the Las Vegas incident and the Man in Black narrative, there's a valuable lesson to be learned. It's a reminder to approach extraordinary claims with a healthy dose of skepticism. As Carl Sagan once said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. In the case of the Man in Black, the evidence simply doesn't hold up. But let's not forget the role of figures like Gray Barker. While his contribution to ufology may have been based on fabrications, he succeeded in capturing our imagination and sparking a dialogue about the unknown. And in the end, isn't that what storytelling is all about? So, as we close this chapter on the Men in Black, let's continue to question, explore, and seek the truth. After all, the truth is out there, waiting to be discovered. And who knows, maybe one day, we'll find out that the reality is even stranger than the myth. Before we wrap up, we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's deep dive into the Men in Black. Do you have any theories of your own, any experiences you'd like to share, or perhaps another mystery you'd like us to unravel? Drop a comment below and let's keep the conversation going. And if you enjoyed this journey into the unknown, why not join us for more? Here, at the Den of Unknown, we're always delving into history's most intriguing figures, events, and phenomena. So hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on our next adventure. Until next time, friends.